Hey guys, so today we're talking about blood pressure. And most people will worry about high blood pressure, and with good reason, as it portends uh, numerous health risks, such as the possibility of increased risk and heart attacks and strokes. But most people don't know that low blood pressure brings a different set of problems, such as reduced brain function and increased mortality risk. If the upper or lower number deviates by more than 10 millimeters of mercury from 120 over 80, it pays to be aware low blood pressure may be affecting your health. Think of it like this. The function of blood pressure is to push the blood out of your blood vessels by permeating out to the rest of your body. High blood pressure is often a compensatory response to something that's going on in the body and it's not quite functioning right. If you cover up that end response of your body, you can get other symptoms, such as a very common side effect of blood pressure medications is brain fog or mental unclarity, which really makes perfect sense. Your brain is not getting the blood or oxygen it needs to function, which equals, uh, yeah. <laughs> As a side note, I often find that in the elderly, if they have not taken care of themselves and their arteries are already starting to harden, this will lead to decreased permeability of those blood vessels. As a result, blood pressure goes up to compensate to get blood to the brain. If you lower blood pressure too much during this time, you don't think too much. So your blood pressure pushes blood through about 100,000 miles of veins, arteries, and capillaries in the body, carrying oxygen, nutrients, immune cells, hormones, neurotransmitters, and other vital compounds. High blood pressure strains those blood vessels. However, low blood pressure means not enough blood is getting to capillaries and tissues, particularly in your hands, feet, and brain. This deprives those tissues of sufficient oxygen and nutrients. You may have chronic nail fungal infections, cold hands and feet. These can also be signs that the immune system is not quite working as well as it should. So it pay, pays to check both of those. The most common cause of low blood pressure other than taking blood pressure medication is poor adrenal function. The adrenals are two walnut-sized glands that sit on top of your kidneys. They produce the stress hormones and help regulate blood pressure. Many people today suffer from adrenal fatigue due to chronic stress. Other causes of adrenal fatigue are poor diets, low blood sugar, chronic infections, uh, gut problems, inflammation, and unmanaged autoimmunity. All of these are stressors. Adrenal fatigue symptoms include chronic tiredness, low blood sugar, losing function between meals, getting sick all the time, and low blood pressure. So part of the way that this happens is that with adrenal fatigue, it's not uncommon for it to cause your potassium levels to go up and your sodium levels to go down, usually in the later stages. This can lead to even lower blood pressure. This is why sometimes I'll recommend certain people with adrenal fatigue issues salt their food with liberal amounts of healthy salt. Restrictions apply primarily either sea or Himalayan salt. Now this is not for everyone, but it can be a very effective means of increasing blood pressure temporarily so as not to contribute the chronic cycle of adrenal fatigue loop. Another issue is orthostatic hypotension. This is a common type of low blood pressure that causes lightheadedness when you go from sitting to standing. This happens because blood pools on the legs upon standing, slowing blood flow back to the heart and the brain. You'll be diagnosed with, hypo, with orthostatic hypotension when the top number of your blood pressure falls by 20 and the bottom number by 10 upon standing. So although orthostatic hypotension is a red flag you need to address your low blood pressure, it becomes more dangerous when it makes you fall or faint. Duh. Orthostatic hypotension is commonly found in those with low blood pressure and low sh blood sugar, but people with high blood pressure can have it too. So what are some functional medicine tips for low blood pressure? If you have signs and symptoms of low blood pressure and adrenal fatigue, consider an adrenal saliva test. This measures levels of the adrenal hormone cortisol throughout the day, in addition to DHEA in most cases. This gives you a more precise therapy target to follow up testing to let you know if your protocol is the right track. And again, everyone knows a person with high blood pressure should avoid salt, but adding some good quality sea salt or Himalayan salt to your diet 
may help boost low blood pressure. In fact, you may be one of those people who craves salt. And again, check out my recommendations for different types of healthy salts. A nutritional compound that can help raise low blood pressure is licorice root extract, or glyceriza. This can extend the life of cortisol in the body and improve, improve blood volume and electrolyte balance, both good things for low blood pressure. There's also certain herbs called adaptogenic herbs, which will help regulate healthy cortisol levels in the body. I've included a few links to some of my favorites, um, such as Cortisol Calm by Pure Encapsulations, Cortisol Manager, um, and some other things. You can also try uh, lavender, rose, chamomile, essential oils, and some teas. So of course it's important to address what's causing the adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue is always secondary to some other thing that's going on, uh, such as stress, the most common. One of the most common causes is eating a diet that causes low blood sugar. Eating a good breakfast, skipping sweets and sweet drinks, minimizing starchy foods, and eating regularly enough to sustain blood sugar are helpful strategies. Of course, it's often a lot more involved than that. For more advice on supporting healthy adrenal function and blood sugar, whether or blood pressure, I should say, uh, whether it's too high or too low, gave my office a call. I'd be happy to help. Check out the links for some of the products that I recommend. In the meantime, I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy. Be happy.